If you're one of the many people in downtown Eau Claire today, you may have noticed a small gathering outside the Pablo Center. Well, that event was the unveiling of a new sculpture in Haymarket Plaza as a way of officially ending Creative Economy Month, which is a month-long celebration of the arts here in Eau Claire. We welcome Eddie's to our plaza. Thanks for joining us. Two years ago, the Public Arts Council began working with the City of Eau Claire to bring a sculpture to the plaza. 45 people submitted a design, and one of those submissions came from San Francisco artist Mike Sabo, who created the sculpture titled Eddies, and it means water that is in motion. It's meant to reflect the confluence of the Chippewa and Eau Claire rivers. Public Arts Council President Joe Ellen Burke says this sculpture truly embodies Eau Claire. The beauty of it is that it's in this public space, and this public space is for the people. Nothing exclusive, it's available to all to view, and we really like the inclusive nature of this. So it's a beautiful day to celebrate the dedication of this and to celebrate Creative Economy Month. To help fund the sculpture, the Public Arts Council received sponsorship from Charter and Northwestern Banks. Well, happy birthday to Wisconsin. 173 years ago, the Badger State joined the Union. Our own Felicity Bosk looks at the history of our state and even checked in with some Chippewa Valley locals to learn their favorite parts of Wisconsin. Following the American Revolution, Wisconsin was part of the Northwest Territory. And then a few decades later, it formed as the Wisconsin Territory, and it stayed that way until 1848 when it joined the Union as the 30th state. Wisconsinites today sure do love where they're from. This is probably pretty cliche, but my favorite thing about Wisconsin is probably beer and cheese. Oh, the cheese. Our favorite thing is definitely the cheese curds. Well, my favorite thing about Wisconsin is the bicycling. Yeah, it's just the best place in the world for it. And I also think just the people here, everyone's super friendly and always willing to help out. My favorite thing about Wisconsin is the community, the people. So yeah, I love that. Official state or not, Wisconsin's borders have always been home to many, including the 11 Native American tribal nations, part of the state's population of 5.8 million, a population that's happy to celebrate 173 years of the Badger State. Across the state, the unofficial start to summer and the unofficial start to tourism season. The long Memorial Day weekend is keeping Wisconsin resorts optimistic for a bounce back in business. In the Wisconsin Dells, many resorts were first to close or they could only open at partial capacity because of the pandemic over the last year. One of the places that's currently bouncing back from such a tough year is the Wilderness Resort, which is seeing more reservations now than it did this time in 2019, even before the pandemic. This community went through a lot last summer, some family-owned business, corporate-owned business. It affects everybody, and I think this community more than ever is so ready to welcome guests to Wisconsin Dells. The Wilderness says more than 55% of staff are fully vaccinated and staying consistent with CDC recommendations. All fully vaccinated people are allowed to enjoy the resort without a mask. With increasing vaccination numbers, low COVID cases, and eased restrictions, many people are on the move. And here in Wisconsin, that trend is very apparent at airports. At Mitchell International Airport in Milwaukee, airport officials expect a big difference in foot traffic for Memorial Weekend 2021 versus the same time last year when it was early in the pandemic. I think with the vaccine rollout and people getting you know more comfortable with, with traveling once again and, and really having a bit of that pent up demand and desire to get back out there. Some pandemic safety measures are still in place, though, such as social distancing stickers and face masks required in the airport and as you board your flights. Overall, though, Milwaukee travelers say the vaccine has them feeling secure and ready for long awaited weekend getaways. And that in-flight excitement isn't just here in Wisconsin this weekend, but across the entire nation, as millions of people are now traveling in numbers we haven't seen in quite a long time. On Friday, the United States saw a pandemic-era record number of passengers traveling through airports. According to the TSA, that was 1.9 million. Meanwhile, on the road, AAA is estimating more than 37 million others are taking road trips this weekend. That's a 60% increase from what we saw during a pandemic-ravaged 2020 Memorial Day. AAA officials saying they expect this weekend's numbers to be a promising sign of what's to come this summer. A lot of pent-up demand. People locked at home for more than a year. Uh, we're seeing that people really want to get out and travel, the so-called revenge travel, where people were able to save a lot of money because they weren't traveling to work last year. And so they're going to places, they're staying longer and doing more things and spending more money. 
While excitement over travel is expected to continue through the summer, health officials warn this slight return to a pre-pandemic normal will also be a big test, with more than half of the nation still unvaccinated. But hopefully that won't be the case for long as the U.S. continues to make steady progress in getting more Americans vaccinated. Right now, about 166 million people, which is more than half of our country's population, have now received at least one dose of the COVID-19 vaccine. And fresh data just released Friday by the U.S. Centers for Disease Control and Prevention shows about three quarters of seniors, people, 70, people 65 excuse me, and older, are fully vaccinated. That percentage rises to 86% of seniors who have received at least one dose of the vaccine. The CDC reporting more than 292 million doses have been given, representing 81% of doses delivered. Meanwhile, the federal government say it's okay for employers to legally offer incentives to employees to get vaccinated against COVID-19. The Equal Employment Opportunity Commission said Friday employers are not prohibited from offering incentives to employees to get vaccinated and there's no limit to the size of those incentives. According to the EEOC, there are two exemptions companies must allow, though, if requiring vaccinations. Those are for disability or religious reasons. If you're vaccinated, you can add summer camp to the list of places you're free to go without a mask. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention says those attending or working at summer camps that are fully vaccinated don't need to wear masks. Right now, children ages 12 and over can get Pfizer's COVID-19 vaccine. Now, if your kid is camp bound but isn't eligible for a vaccine yet, health officials say to just make sure you know about a camp safety protocols ahead of time. Dr. Mary Mason is the founder of an after school program that's also been running summer camp activities for years. She says parents should keep up to date with CDC recommendations and ask camp instructors directly about how they're handling the safety of staff and campers. You really need to just, you know, ask the questions. And if the camp doesn't have a good answer for you, then you really need to dig into it because it, it should be something that is very transparent. Dr. Mason adds alongside COVID precautions, don't forget to send your child with the more traditional summer protection like bug spray and sunscreen. Well, sunscreen was definitely needed today, Justin. It was, yeah. I don't even think I saw a cloud in the sky, but you right. said earlier some clouds are moving in. Yeah, we're probably not going to need it as much tomorrow <laughs> with a lot of that cloud cover coming our way. But as we get into Monday, we'll probably need to bust it back out. There's going to be a chance for some storms then too. But let's focus on tonight and the rest of this evening into tomorrow. 52, your current temp, clear and calm. Nice and comfortable out there for us and temperatures across the valley are in the low 50s now. We will fall into the 40s overnight. Black River Falls already down to 42, so they might even fall into the 30s. Heads up down there if you are in the Black River Falls area. But otherwise, we are going to have the cloud cover take over as we go through the rest of the night and into tomorrow. Maybe a chance for a shower or two tomorrow during midday or even into the afternoon, but dry air might win out, so we might not see too many of that just cloud cover coming our way. But we have to talk about those chances for showers and the shot for some strong.